All right, so I'm inside because it got too cold outside and um, my video was too long for me to upload from my phone. So I had to transfer it to the computer and now it's uploading on YouTube on the computer. So I hope it doesn't take long. But anyway, um, yeah, there was like, a, like, I just, I think when you give poor people money, like for me, at least personally, I'm just like, who am I to judge what they do with that money or not? Like, it's not, it's not for me to to judge them and to be like, oh, I don't want to give them money because they're just going to spend it on cigarettes or, you know, drugs or beer or whatever. Like, that's, who cares? Like, that's not my problem. You know, that's none of my business. I'm just trying to do the right thing. I feel like, okay, I'm trying to show this person that there's kindness in the world, that there's people willing to help them. And this is what I can do for you. This is how I can help you. And it's up to you to decide what you do with that money or not. You know, that's between you and your maker. It's not my business. And so, anyway, um, there was like one one day when I was in Spain and I gave this man, I think, a, year, a euro. And I was as I was handing him a euro, he was trying to pull out a, a cigarette from a pack of cigarettes. like, And I kind of caught him off guard and he was like, oh, okay, he took the money from me. And part of me for a second kind of hesitated because I'm like, hmm. You know, like, why are you spending this money on on cigarettes, you know? Um, because, oh, I'm going to turn down the song because I don't want, like, Facebook to be like, oh, copyright infringement or whatever. You're using Adele music. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I, I kind of was like, mm, you know, like, why are you spending it on cigarettes? But right after, immediately after, I was like, you know what? Maybe this is how this man copes with living on the streets because I think... He couldn't use his legs or something and um maybe that's his way of staying warm because it's getting cold out now and maybe that's how he copes with not having to eat so much because smoking does make you less hungry and that just like all of that like part of me kind of judged him and then immediately like after i try to put myself in his shoes and it, it's not to excuse his behavior it's just like okay maybe that's how he feels about it maybe that's why he chooses to buy cigarettes instead and I felt really bad for him. And I, you know, I gave him a year anyway and I kept going about my business. So, you know, the entire time I'm like traveling, I'm giving away fruit and stuff on very few occasions, like a euro or two. And, um, and then I'm sitting there asking for help. Like, uh, I don't remember exactly what I said in the other video, but, um, like, I, you know, I would see people like walk by or slow down and or stop and read my sign and just keep going and then there was like even this one instance where i had my hood over my my head because i was just like crying so much and i could hear this american girl um because i could tell by her accent and um she was standing like a few meters away with her friends and she was reading my sign out loud in english and then i heard her stop after she got done reading so you know i was thinking like oh okay maybe she'll come and um give me something you know and then I lift up my head and I notice that she's like laughing with her friends about something else and they're crossing the street to go to the Sagrada Familia and I just couldn't believe it like how can you read about someone's misfortune and just keep going about your business and not care and like not even contribute 10 cents to this person and like, there was, like, a food cart place thing right there, and if anything, buy them a drink if you are if you don't want them to spend their money on bad stuff and stuff. Because I know she doesn't know me, I know she doesn't know what I would spend that money on, but, like, I probably wouldn't have been able to eat anything she bought me anyway, but still, you know, like, it's the intention that counts, or the thought that counts. And I, w I think I tolerated being out there for about an hour crying like almost the entire time feeling so bad that i don't know just kind of hating the world for a second or for a bit that people are so cool and that i do my best to always like be a really really good person and <laughs> and try to help other people out and i'm not perfect i make a shitload of mistakes but I always aspire to be better and I always try to help people out when they really need it and, you know, just to put more goodness in the world.
and that in that entire time not one person even gave me like 10 cents not even a cent and uh we i, I just I really put things into perspective and i really realized like just how I really put myself in the shoes of people who see themselves obligated to beg every single day and in a way kind of humiliate themselves and because people reject you people don't even look at you and they they pretend like you don't exist or they just don't care and um i felt really bad for them because i thought oh my god like this is just for just even an hour i'm doing this i don't really need to do it but it would help out if they could um, give me something, you know, to so I could have food to eat or get to the airport or whatever. And, um, <sighs> my God, it was just, it was crazy, crazy. And then uh, my uncle called me and told me, like, he had bought me the plane ticket, but it was for the next day. And so I thought, okay, I don't have any money to stay anywhere. I'm just going to go spend the night at the airport. I went to the airport, um... And, oh, I realized I had 20 euros hidden in my uh, phone thingy-majiggy here. So I was like, oh, I'm rich, I have 20 euro. <laughs> so I used that to buy myself something to eat and to go to the airport. Um, I went to the airport and I thought, okay, since I'm here already, I might as well just try to get my uh, ticket already. My phone had died, so I couldn't... Uh, get the flight information from my phone. I had to go to the check-in desk. And when I went, um, they told me that I needed a passport. And I was like, dude, but it's like Sunday. My my consulate is closed. I can't even go get an, a passport. And I have my European ID. So isn't that enough for me to fly back to Belgium? I mean, it's part of the European Union. And they were like, no, you need a passport to fly out. And I'm sorry, like too bad. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what am I going to do now? How am I going to get out of this airport? Like, I don't have enough money to get out of this airport and go spend the night somewhere. And I, I don't know, like, what cheap places there are around anyway. And I don't even have money for, like, the consulate uh, to get my passport or all this stuff. So I go to the information desk in the airport. And, like, I'm trying to tell this guy my story. And then I start crying again and tearing up. And he, you know, felt really sorry for me. He was so helpful. And he was like, look, let's try these emergency numbers. No, none of the emergency numbers from my consulate, like, worked. I had to wait till the next day. And then he was like, look, um, maybe we can uh, see if we can find a cheap hostel or something near your consulate, near the bus station. So we did that. And um, yeah, he found this nice little place. He told me how to get there. And I didn't have a charger up until then. So I had to ask the... I found this uh, electronic shop in the airport. And I asked them to please let me charge my phone. You know, I told them what had happened. And they were all like, mm, okay. And then I you know, they were getting kind of like, oh, like, we don't normally do this, so you can't charge it for that long or whatever. So anyway, I got it to 30%, and then I went um, to take the train out of the airport back to the city. And then, up until then, I only had like 15 euro or something. And, um, like, the, the train to get out was like four, four euro and something, and then the night in the hostel was like 14 euro. So I was like, oh my god, I don't have enough money like to get out of here and spend the night somewhere. What am I going to do? And um, so the guy that was helping like people get train tickets from the airport out, out of the airport, he, uh, yeah, I was like, man, I told him what had happened. I was like, I don't know what to do. And then I noticed my bank debit card in my uh, phone case thing. So I thought, okay, I'll try it, see if it works. Because, you know, typically when you travel abroad, you have to authorize that you're going to be using your card abroad. Otherwise, they block it and they don't let you use it. So I thought, okay, I'll try it and we'll see. And um, I went ahead and did that and it went through and I got my train ticket and I was like, oh, thank God I have money to stay somewhere now. And I got out of there. I found the place. Um, it was a little complicated to get to at night. Uh, but I found it, and I uh, it was a really nice little hostel. The first time I've stayed in a youth hostel like that with, like, all these bunk beds and, you know, showers and all this stuff. But it was really nice, and um, I was just exhausted. And I let my family know I was okay and what was going to happen. And then the next day, I had to um, go out to my embassy, and I ran into 
some problems as well because right around that time Belgium had like this big terrorist alert and like everything was shut down public transportation was like very limited there was no metro and there were like these bomb threats and like I told like I didn't think I could I didn't have any money any cash on me to go get my passport or to get like pictures for the passport or whatever it is um, and my uncle, you know, he went and tried to find like a Western Union or something to send me some money. And he called me. He was like, oh, no, this place is closed. Everything here is closed. I'm going to walk down further to this next place. But I'm not sure if it's going to be open either because everything is like shut down here. And I thought like, OK, I'm going to try my bank, my ATM card um, in a my, my sorry. I'm going to try my debit card in an ATM machine nearby and see if I can get some money out. I went and did that. I was able to get 50 euro out. So I was like, okay, thank God I have money for what I need now. And um, anyway, I had to get, I my passport apparently was going to take two days to uh, like be processed and given to me. And I only, I was going to leave that evening. So I didn't have that time, but I was able to get a safe conduct um, paper thing. And that was 20 euro. And uh, I had to take pictures for that and take it to the consulate. So, you know, I went to the bus station, I tried to uh, find this um, picture taking machine or whatever inside there. I took the pictures, I went to the consulate, I gave them my police report papers, and they gave me the safe conduct piece of paper thing so I could leave freaking Spain for uh, Belgium. And then, uh, yeah, from there, like, I went back to where I had taken the bus from the day before to the airport and uh, I think so oh no 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 and then from there I took the train from the bus station and um, I went back to the airport and I was able to get in without a problem and I was so relieved that I could take my flight out of there and just finally be on my way back to Brussels so happy and um, that my ordeal was finally coming to an end and then I got back to Brussels and I was uh, so happy to be back on Belgian soil with my family and I was like thank god I hate Barcelona I hate Spain no I don't really hate Spain but I was just really upset because afterwards like I find out that Barcelona was really dangerous supposedly and all of this stuff and um, yeah it's just terrible and like the person that robbed me I think he was Moroccan and there's like a lot of animosity here uh, between like Europeans and Moroccans, especially in Belgium. Like there are these issues with Moroccans. They don't really like them so much and they think that they're lazy and blah, 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 all this crap. And like you guys know from my vlogs, like I had really, really good experiences with Muslim people along my travels. A really nice guy that took me from Holland from the Netherlands to Germany he was so nice and he was Moroccan and the guy that hosted me in uh, Sevilla um, he was Muslim not Moroccan Albania but still you know and like I don't believe in that sh that shit you know that all of these you know Moroccans are the same or all Mexicans or whatever are the same like you have all types of people from everywhere in the world you know um, but it was really ironic because that morning I was filming on my big camera and I was uh, at the train station or bus station in Madrid. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't believe in all of these, you know, generalizations and da 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 about like Muslim people and Moroccans. And they're all really like nice people. It just depends on it all depends on who you come into contact with. And then I end up getting robbed by a person who I am quite sure was probably Moroccan. But anyway, you know, shit happens. And I just, I was upset, I was angry, and then, like, I just, you know, I'm not an overly religious person, but I do believe in, in a God, and I just asked God, like, okay, whatever, you know, I'm not going to wish any ill towards that man, uh, just, I'll let you work that out, and if he really saw the need to steal from me, then I assume it's because he really needs to do it, and that's the only way he can see of making money. I don't consider it the right way of going about things, but 
I don't know, maybe that's just the only way that he seems. He can make a living and provide for himself and maybe family members, I don't know. And whatever, you know, I hope that he was um, able to, to use that for something. And I know that better things are going to come my way and it's going to be okay. And um, so that's what I told myself and that's what I believe. And yeah, but it really sucked. It was really, really... Uh, a crappy situation like I've had so much bad shit happen to me in Europe and like nothing really really bad ever happened to me in Peru in my entire five years there and like crazy shit has happened to me here in Europe um with like stealing and, and being robbed and stuff which I'll get to in another video some other time but anyway guys so that's it for this really long uh video um if you have anything to say to me don't forget to leave me some comments below if you like this video or uh, you're interested in hearing more about my travels and stuff then just uh remember to subscribe um i'm gonna have maybe a few other videos on um my travels in spain after i return to peru but I need to be to in Peru and stuff because, yeah, the cable for my external hard drive went missing here somewhere. So I need I have no way to access those videos. So once I get to Peru and I have a cable, I'll be able to make videos for um, regarding like my travels in Spain. And um, what else? And then, yeah, I'm going to vlog today about my... Uh, trip back home to Peru and to see my family and stuff so thank you so much for watching once again and I hope I haven't bored you and um I hope I haven't made you think that there's like bad people out in the world or whatever no there's plenty of good people out there but you just happen to run into the not so good ones once in a while but that's life but anyway guys thank you so much once again take care bye